major archaeological excavations at Jericho began with a German team in the early 1900s led by Ernst Sellen. This was followed by a British team headed by John Garstang in the 1930s. At the time of their digs, both Sellen and Garstang believed they had uncovered a layer of destruction that matched the biblical story. First of all, we're told that Jericho was fortified. When the archaeologists dug the city, particularly Kathleen Kenyon, when she did her work in the 50s, discovered that the tell that the city's built on was surrounded by a great earthen rampart. Excavators found that Jericho was protected by a brilliant defensive system. At its base was a stone retaining wall more than 15 feet high, with a defensive extension wall of mud bricks rising higher still. Beyond this was the rampart, a steep slope covered with a slick surface of white plaster, where attackers would have been exposed to arrows and sling stones from above. At the top of this rampart was the main city wall, also made of mud brick, this one more than 25 feet high and 10 feet thick. Referring to our ancient text, Joshua 6.20 says that on the seventh day at the sound of the trumpets, the wall collapsed. And the uh, Bible is very specific in how it uh, describes that event. Uh, the Hebrew wording there is the walls uh, takatha fell beneath themselves. All in bricks from the city wall can be seen in this diagram from Kenyon's excavation report. In her write-up, she makes it clear that it was not the stone retaining wall that fell, but rather the mud brick wall that once stood on top of it. In Joshua 6.20, it says that after the walls collapsed, the Israelites went up into the city. Kenyon's excavation report shows that the pile of fallen mud bricks could have been used as a ramp by the charging Israelites. Climbing up over that pile of collapsed mud bricks, up over the top of the stone retaining wall, up the embankment and into the city. Well, when the city met its end, uh, these mud brick walls collapsed and they actually uh, fell down to the base of the stone retaining wall. Kenyon describes it very uh, clearly and in detail in her excavation report. And then we're told they set the city on fire. And that's exactly what we find. Jericho was massively destroyed by fire. Kenyon said it was very clear that within the city, the walls of the buildings had fallen as well. And she says, that the walls fell before the fire. And so we have the sequence that we read in the Bible. First, the fallen walls, and then the city being set on fire by the Israelites. We have a great deal of uh, evidence, scientific evidence, that the walls of Jericho have collapsed by an earthquake, just the way described in the Bible. The best evidence are the skeletons that were uncovered in Jericho, 1400 BC, which were obviously destroyed by a collapsed wall. Within the city, a very unique discovery was made. Both Garstang and Kenyon found in the houses that they excavated, many jars full of grain that were stored there. The store jars in the city were pretty full. That suggests the harvest had only recently been gathered in. And um, the details in the biblical account point to an event that happened sometime in the spring. And down there in the Jordan Valley, spring is when the harvest is gathered in, the grain harvest. When the Israelites crossed the Jordan, the first thing they did was celebrate Passover. Well, when is Passover? Again, the spring of the year. The full jars also indicate that if this was a siege, it was very short, unusual for a strong fortified city such as Jericho. And that matches the biblical account because the siege was only seven days. Otherwise, the people inside would have consumed a lot of that grain if it dragged out for months. Was the grain found all over the city? Yes. In every house that was excavated, they found jars of grain. There's one other intriguing detail at Jericho that fits the Bible remarkably well. It had to do with a promise made to Rahab. She actually lived in the city wall, and after hiding the spies, they promised her 
that she and her family would be protected when they attacked the city. And they kept their promise. She had marked her home with a scarlet cord, which she hung out the window. The Germans found that in this one short stretch on the north side of the city, there were houses built on the rampart between the lower city wall and the upper city wall. And some of those houses were built right up against the lower city wall. They found that the city wall did not fall in this area. So that provides an explanation for how the spies could have saved Rahab and her family because God brought the wall down everywhere else except where her house was. And we have archeological evidence to back that up. Well, what if people say, well, you're biased? Uh, I think everybody in the field is biased one way or another. I admit my bias. However, I cannot make up the evidence. I cannot plant it in the ground. I have analyzed it and compared it to the Bible, and I see, wow, it matches exactly. That's science. Look at your evidence and come to a conclusion based on the evidence.